Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you what's new in WordPress 6.6. .6. So first off, WordPress 6.5 introduced the ability to add shadows to certain elements. However, the shadows all had preset styles and you couldn't adjust them. Well, WordPress 6.6 .6 takes it a step further and now allows you to customize the appearance of shadows, or in other words, customize the presets. So to demonstrate, let me click on a button here and come over here to the Styles tab. We're gonna scroll down and you should see shadow here under border and shadow. If not, click the options icon and make sure shadow is checked. So here we have all of the presets for drop shadows. So before you could only add drop shadows that look the way they look in these presets, but now you can style the presets. So to do that, come over here to styles. So you'll see here inside the sidebar, we now have this shadows option. So I'll click on that. You have the default shadow styles here, the default presets. So right now I have the natural one set up. So if I click on drop shadow, it's now gonna give me the option to customize the appearance of the natural preset. So let me just, for example, click on the color and we'll change this to red and you'll see that's gonna update in real time. If I wanna undo that, I can click on the option here and click reset and then back out of here. You can also set up a custom drop shadow. So I'll click the plus icon there and click shadow one. It gives you a little preview right here. Let's click drop shadow and we're gonna change this value. So I'm just gonna copy my hex code here from the same blue that we're using for this button and we can reposition the shadow if we want using the X and Y position values. You can change the blur so we can increase the blur there, decrease it and we can change how far out the uh, blur spreads there under the button. So there's our custom shadow. We can rename this as well if we want. I'll we'll name this WBP for Whirly Bird Photo Light Blue and click Save. There's our new shadow name. And now if I come back here to this button, so we'll click on the button, we'll come back to the settings sidebar, make sure we're under block and click the styles tab. We're gonna scroll down to shadow, and now you'll see our brand new drop shadow we just created. And when I click on that, it will now appear here on my button. Obviously that looks horrible, but that's just for demonstration purposes. So for the next new feature, I'll come over here and just click open navigation, and we'll come over to pages. So the new feature is that we can quickly preview the pages here inside the content area before entering the page to edit it in the site editor. So for example, if I click portfolio, it's gonna give me a preview of that, but we're not actually inside the site editor. We're just seeing a preview of the page. It just allows you to quickly bounce around here and see your pages before you click to enter them and then edit them. So once you want to edit a page in the site editor, you can either click on the actual main content area or you can click the little edit button and now you're inside the site editor for that page. An exciting WordPress 6.6 .6 feature is synced pattern overrides. So if I scroll down, I do have a synced pattern on this page, this get in touch synced pattern. And as many of you already know, synced patterns allow you to create a single instance of a pattern and have it sync across the entire site. So anywhere we place the synced pattern on the site, it'll show up exactly as you see it here. Of course, it looks a little weird right now because we're inside the site editor. Let me just come over here and type in the URL for our website. So you can see the synced pattern is here on the home page. It's also here on the about page. It looks the exact same on both pages. So to use this feature, you're gonna come over here inside the block toolbar when you have the synced pattern selected and you're gonna click edit original. And what you have to do is click on one of the individual elements inside the synced pattern. So for example, we'll click on the title and then you're gonna come over here, make sure you have the settings sidebar showing and you're inside the block tab. Come down here to advanced and then you'll scroll down and you'll see here it says overrides. So we'll click enable overrides. And you can name the specific override. So in this case, we're gonna use the title here of the contact synced pattern. So we'll just name it contact title and click enable. I did this earlier, which is why it's auto populating. So I'll click enable. And you can do that for each element inside the synced pattern you want to be able to edit. So I'll click on the paragraph, come over here, click enable overrides. Again, that auto populates because I did this earlier. I'll click enable. And we'll do it for this button as well. So click the button, click advanced, 
and then click Enable Overrides and click Enable. So these three elements can now be edited individually in a single instance of the synced pattern and it will only affect that single instance. So let me come over here, click save and save again. And then I can click the back button to return to the site editor. So now if I scroll down, we can edit just the single instance of the synced pattern. So I'll click on it. And again, you have the edit original option, but I can now click on the title and type contact us and then I'm adding this text and then we'll change the button to get in touch and my dog is snoring. Hopefully that's not getting picked up. So now come over here, click save and let's come over to the about page. When I refresh, you'll see we have the additions I made here. But if I come over to the home page, you'll see that it still looks the exact same. So that is what the pattern overrides do. It just allows you to edit a single instance of a synced pattern without affecting all the other instances. So we can undo our changes and undo the pattern overrides. Let's come back here to the site editor. So if I were to click on any of these elements, you're going to see it now says reset. So when I click reset, it's going to bring us back to the original synced pattern. And then to turn off pattern overrides, click edit original once again, and then click on the individual elements come back to the advanced drop down and click disable overrides and click disable again. And now overrides will be turned off for individual elements. Once I do that, I'll click save and save again, and then click the back button and we're back. For the next couple features, I'm going to get out of the site editor and just go to the standard block editor. So let me just click open navigation and click the logo once again, and we'll go to pages and we'll click edit next to the home page. The next new feature I want to point out is that the page settings sidebar, which displays information about your page has some updates so that they've removed some of the clutter. They've rearranged some things and added some information to make this more helpful. So now instead of having the featured image in its own little dropdown, it's now up at the top here for blog posts. You're going to have a little link that allows you to add an excerpt from the blog. Again, excerpt had its own drop down before. Now it's just placed as a link. It's going to give you a word count as well as how long it's going to take to read and when it was last edited. You now have it called status here instead of it being called visibility. And if you have comments enabled for a particular page, it'll say open. In this case, it says closed blog post. For example, if you have comments enabled, it'll say open next to it. And also for blog posts, you'll have a toggle that allows you to make that particular blog post sticky. That means that the blog post, no matter what, will stick to the very top or the very front of a list of blog posts, whereas blog posts are normally listed chronologically. So if you have an important blog post, you can have it sticky and be the very first blog post, even as you add new blog posts to your website. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. WordPress 6.6 .6 now rolls out with the control or command G shortcut key to group items. This is pretty much the default on all creative software. So happy to see it in WordPress now as well. So how this works is let's come over to the list view and we'll come over to this group here. Let's come over to columns and let's click on the first column, which is a group. So let's say we want to select multiple blocks here. If I click on one of the blocks and then shift click to select all three of these blocks, when I hit control G, it's now going to group all those items. So that's kind of the expected behavior. Again, almost every other piece of creative software has control G as the shortcut key for grouping. Control Z will undo that and we'll exit out of there. WordPress 6.6 .6 now has a new grid block, which allows you to create grid layouts using blocks. So to demonstrate, let me click on this column block here and make sure I select the group. And I'm just going to come over here to options and click add after and type forward slash grid and click on the grid block. So by default, it'll enter a few cells here. How many cells it has is going to depend on where exactly you insert this, how wide uh, the current selected area is. And if we come over here inside the block settings, you'll see we have this set to auto layout and the minimum column width is listed here as 12 REM. So we can customize this in various ways. For example, I'll change the alignment. Let's go full width. So now you can see we have many more grid cells here. 
And let me just come over here to this group of blocks and just duplicate this. And we're going to drag this group into one of the cells. And then once again, let's select the entire grid. So there's tons of different ways to customize this. Let's come over here and minimum column width, we can click and drag. And you'll see that the number of grid cells here that display is gonna shrink as we make the width wider and wider. So that just kind of automatically adjusts. You can see it adds more grids as I shrink the width. You can also come over here to manual and just manually set how many actual grids you wanna add here. A cool feature with this is if I click on this group inside the cell and then I come over here and duplicate this, it'll automatically duplicate it into the next cell. It won't duplicate it below uh, this current group inside the same cell. It'll place it into the new grid and uh, into the new grid cell. And I'm gonna duplicate it again to go ahead and fill out that last cell there. So let me just select the entire grid. And if I were to reduce the number of columns, it's gonna put that third cell here onto a second row. So now I have two rows, two columns in each row. And then probably the coolest feature of the grid blocks is let's say we increase this to four. I can actually change how many cells a single cell spans here in the grid. So for example, let me click on this group. Let's say I want this to span three cells. I can click and drag this and then release. And now that will span three cells. And then because we have four inside the single row here, the uh, third item is gonna automatically go onto a second row. And the second item here is just gonna take up that last grid cell. And I can do it again down here. So if I click on this, and let's say we want this to span two cells, I can click and drag and release. And let's click off of here to see what this looks like. So you can create some really cool layouts with this. And I believe this layout style is called a bento grid when you have like different size cells inside the grid. Definitely an exciting feature introduced into WordPress 6.6. .6. Let me click on the actual grid and then just delete this to get rid of it. Another new feature in WordPress 6.6 .6 is going to be negative margins. So this feature has been in high demand. You don't always want a margin of zero or greater. Sometimes you want things to overlap in WordPress. So that's where negative margins come in. Now this feature will only work wherever margins are supported inside of a block. Not all block types support margins. So for example, if I click on this image inside of the block settings sidebar, you're gonna see if I click advanced, there's nothing about margins in here. If I come over to the styles tab, nothing about margins. However, if I click on this text right here, you'll see we have dimensions and then here we have margin. So to add a negative margin, come over to one of the sliders and click set custom size. And here, for example, we'll type minus 50. And because this is the top and bottom margins for this text, it's now gonna add a negative margin to both the top and bottom of our title here. And let me just get rid of this. If you wanted to only add it to the top or bottom margin, you can click this little icon here. Let's go with top. And then once again, click set custom size and now let's go negative 50. So that's just a negative margin on the top. So let's get rid of this. So oddly enough, when WordPress 6.6 .6 was demoing its new features on its release page, it showed two images overlapping each other. But again, images do not by default support margins. So you can't really create that layout by default. However, there is a workaround. So with this image selected, if I click options and duplicate this, and then shift click to select both these images and use the new control G shortcut key to group these, the new group will now have dimensions so we can add margins that way. But these two items are connected, which means if I add a negative margin, it's going to apply it to the top and bottom of both of these. So as you can see, the result of that is that the text is gonna move up underneath the second image. That's not what I want. What I want is the second image to overlap the first image. So let me get rid of this. So what I have to do is come over here, delete one of the images, select the group. So it's just this single image now. And when I come over here to the styles tab, we will still have the margin under dimensions. But of course, we only have a single image. What you can do is now duplicate the group that was created when we originally grouped the two images and then deleted one. So now you've got two separate groups here. And yes, I know this is a pain in the ass. But now with this second group selected, we'll come over to the styles tab, come over to margin. Let's just select the top margin. 
we'll click set custom size and then for example set that to minus 50 and now the two images overlap so in my testing you have to use that workaround for this to work you can also of course offset this with padding as well if you want so let's just choose the left padding increase it and now it's sort of offset how it is in the 6.6 .6 news release. I think they should just add margin support to images so you don't have to do this workaround. But that's how you achieve that effect that's showcased in the 6.6 .6 update. Just a couple of features left to mention here. WordPress 6.6 .6 will now roll back automatic plugin updates if the automatic plugin update breaks your site. So let me just navigate and I'll hit leave to the plugin section of our site. So if you have auto updates enabled, which I don't for this site, but let's say you have auto updates enabled and this plugin updates and it breaks your site, WordPress 6.6 .6 will now automatically roll that plugin back to the previous version to unbreak your site. The last new feature I'll cover in this video for WordPress 6.6 .6 is that you now have color palettes and font sets that you can use inside of a single theme. This basically allows for style variations inside a theme for individual blocks or for smaller areas within your theme. So instead of there being style variations that affect the entire theme site-wide, you can just have a style variation for a block or a set of blocks. And the reason I'm on the news release for this feature is that it's not readily built into WordPress and it's not really something that everyday users who aren't theme developers can use. You have to kind of build in the style variations using code, at least that's my understanding. So they do have a video here demonstrating how it works. So if the style variations are built into the theme by the theme developer, you'll see variations for a specific set of blocks. And you can go in here, it's showing you and add palettes. And then you'll see here, you can also have different font sets, which means you can have different fonts for different aspects of your typography. So for example, when they're clicking a font set, it's creating a new font for the heading, it's creating a new font for the paragraph, and then it's creating a, another new font, so three separate fonts for the buttons, all in one click. So again, this is not something that's going to be automatically displayed in your WordPress theme when you download WordPress 6.6 .6 and update your theme. This is something that has to be coded into the theme by a developer. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.